right, well, welcome back to another week of Naz Chat. Um, this week we have Brian with us instead of Josh. Josh is enjoying some vacation time. So thanks, Brian, for filling in. Uh, we're going to throw you right in. We are talking about the Holy Spirit this week. Um, this past month in the kids' um, area, we have focused a lot on, on the Holy Spirit and um, who he is, how he helps us, the gift that he is in our lives. And it's honestly, it's been a really, really exciting month. I'm, I've loved the conversations that we've had. Um, but it also really folds into where we are at as far as the church calendar speaks. And not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before we celebrated Pentecost. So we'll kind of um, mesh together some of the stuff we've been talking about, some of the stuff that you've been preaching on, and hope that that folds into a good conversation today. Good. Yeah. Yeah, as Pentecost was um, not, not it was Memorial Day Sunday, and then the Sunday before that was Pentecost. And Sunday before that, I think, was... No, it wasn't Mother's Day. All these Mays full of <laughs> holidays. But Pentecost Sunday uh, is not a, a New Testament Christian-only celebration. Pentecost was actually a Jewish feast. And so when God sent his Holy Spirit uh, to fill the early believers, it was not um, not a new work or it's not something that was uh, unknown on the calendar, but it was already celebrated. And that's why so many were gathered. They were mm -hmm. gathering this significant event of Pentecost and Pentecost celebrated the giving of the law of Mount Sinai. And so, and even if you go back into the church history or the early history, some of the events that happened on uh, Pentecost and Acts were supposedly happening on the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. And so uh, Pentecost represents, represented to the Jewish people, this ideal that God had given them a way of living. And, and so then God sends the Holy Spirit uh, to Christians to give them a way of living. And so um, that, that's kind of the background of, of the Pentecost celebration. Yeah. And so, um, Brian, if you don't mind, I'm going to have you sure. read a couple of passages today. The first one is going to be an Acts, and this is the day of Pentecost. And then I want you to switch down to Romans and kind of more, okay, once that day is passed, what does that really look like in our lives? Perfect. Okay. So Acts 2, 1 through 4 says that when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So then we go down to Romans 8, 12 through 17. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For, you live, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. All right, thanks. So let's go back to that first passage, kind of put ourselves in the disciples' shoes in this time. They are coming to the end. They've had their 40 days with Jesus after his resurrection. Um, he left, told them to hang tight. More help is coming. They've, in this period of time, chosen another disciple mm -hmm. to replace Judas. They thought it was really important that Jesus had chosen 12. We need to make sure we are still a group of 12 people, um, but then there's also others gathered with them. So what do you think that period of time would have been like for them? As the world kind of keeps spinning, another religious feast comes around, and they have the go and wait kind of happening right now. I think it shows their impatience uh, because they choose a another apostle that really becomes irrelevant, that God had chosen someone else, and that's Paul, the apostle, mm -hmm. to be the new 12th. And so, you know, I, I think there's that that tension of waiting and going. I, I think we're much better suited to go than to wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's our natural inclination is to go even, or at least that's me. Sometimes I go when I should be waiting. Yeah. Uh, they needed to wait. And he said, wait. And they couldn't even wait 10 days. Right. Before they, they still had, need to we, do something. We, right. okay. do something. We're right. stuck here. Let's, uh, let's get a new disciple going right. here. <laughs> and it, it's kind of, glo you know, the Bible doesn't make it, you know, God doesn't punish them right. because I think he right. understands how we're geared. Right. And they're thinking, well, we need to be doing something. Yeah. 
Well, let's appoint a 12th one, okay? That makes sense, right. <laughs> yeah, let's go with what makes sense, yeah. Let's yeah. Kind of reset all the silverware, get everybody play sets. Okay, yeah. we're ready. Yeah. Uh, today is the first day that I'm home from summer break from teaching mm -hmm. and up at 6.30, you know, couldn't sleep. You know what I mean? Um, I've done two loads of laundry and the dishes before 8 a.m. You know what I mean? Don't know what to do, so let's, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah should be doing summer stuff. You know, we got summer stuff to do, mm -hmm. but let's just do what we always do. You know, kind of got to do something. So let's go with what's familiar. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense <laughs> for me today. <laughs> Which I feel like could go into a whole other yes. conversation about how we do not know how to rest well, Correct. especially when it comes to resting in yep. the spirit and resting and waiting on him. I feel like that's a, that's a whole different conversation for a different day. Mm -hmm. But have you ever kind of felt like you have been in a season where like you almost have those simultaneous green and red lights? Like you see what's coming, but it, isn't here yet. I know um, Josh talked a lot about kind of just that living in that tension of the in-between. Mm -hmm. As I know that I have had some pretty big transitions in, in my, I guess, work life, or I don't know, it coincided with my spiritual life. Am I a teacher? Am I going to work youth? I mean, like back and forth. And I remember in each of those instances, once I felt like God had made a decision and told me to move, um, my very next question was, okay, so what next now that I have moved? Mm -hmm. And it was a very, very tense period um, where I was just trying to figure out what to do next, even though he just wanted me to sit and rest and listen and be prepared for what he was doing. Yeah. Um, so I can, I can definitely identify with that feeling of we've done what you thought you told us to do. Now what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you just kind of have been in a transition in the last couple of years. Now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you've been children's pastor here for nearly two years, right? Um, a year and a half. Yeah. year and a half. Be two years in the fall, right? Right. Or in January. Yeah. And so, man, I can't remember. Is that, was that right? Or was it already two years? Wait. Oh, yeah, it was already two years. It's already two years. <laughs> Congratulations. Time well, flies when you're having fun, right? Absolutely. And even yeah. when you're not. <laughs> right. It's just that. It was past year, yeah. But I mean, the, the transition that you went through, I mean, mm -hmm. and, and you know, the, the conversations and yeah. how does this look and, and what's next? And I think you're still in the midst of that. What's mm -hmm. next? What's this look like? Right. And, um, I think life's full of that, though. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I don't. I think if you ever get so comfortable, <laughs> I don't know, may, maybe not. That, that I think God likes to keep us a little bit uncomfortable because mm -hmm. when we get too comfortable, it doesn't keep us moving. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that in between is not is sure. not uh, transition stink. They do very much so. Yeah. Yeah. I did a whole study with a friend on this idea of like waiting well and just kind of mm -hmm. like what are the things that you can do while you're waiting when you have that green light, you have this dream you you can you see the promised land here but there there are obstacles there's things in the way it's a timing issue it's a function it's a logistics and it's like well sometimes you can just keep doing what you know how to do well mm -hmm. you can be ready to move like and the, those kinds of things we don't just like set up camp and just say well this is where it ends right. like sure but we do keep making those purposeful steps and sometimes the right step is to do nothing mm -hmm. and to just kind of sit and wait and that's i think where jesus really wanted the disciples like be together comfort each other really huddle up here um because everything is about to change and so instead of focusing i mean most of our discussion on that actual day of pentecost because if you read that chapter in um, the whole chapter of Acts 2, I mean, crazy things are happening. Yeah, they are they are speaking in different languages. All of these people who've gathered for this, um, for this feast are hearing in their native tongue the gospel, the good news, this earth-shattering reality of what Jesus came and did. Um, but I loved um, our, our cool Carl. He's our guy that does all of our videos. He was like, feeling so bummed. He's like, but I wasn't there for that. Like, are you telling me that I'm, I missed it? Like, I didn't get to be in that room. I didn't get to, so what's, what's in it? Like, what, what's there for me? And that I missed the day of Pentecost. So what now? Um, and when reality is like, we are all called to lead a spirit filled life. Mm -hmm. Like they talk, like oftentimes it's mentioned this idea of walking in the spirit, being led by the spirit. Practically, what does that, what does that mean? How would you explain that to somebody? Cause it kind of seems a little out there. Maybe. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Right. I think I think of all the members of the Trinity that you try to associate with, the Holy Spirit is the one that is uh, don't want to get hit by lightning. <laughs> Has the least amount of personality associated. You know, we see God the Father, God the Son. Okay, we can yeah, identify right, with right, Father and Son. Lightning, right, right here. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. But you know, but how do you identify the Holy Spirit? You know what I mean? There's that that is a that is the term itself is a little uh, 
nebulous at times. So yeah, I think that is difficult to try it's to find. Francis Chan has the book called Forgotten God. That's what I was mm-hmm. just thinking about. Yeah, and the, and the whole idea is it's easy for me to talk about Jesus, but I feel super spiritual to talk about the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, if I say, well, the Holy Spirit's guide me, I sound like, ooh, right. out there. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm talking about Jesus being my guide. And, yep. and, and I, think, I think there's some natural, uh, I don't know that that's necessarily wrong because Jesus lived a life that we can see sure. and the Holy Spirit's working within us. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's a different thing, but uh, definitely, yeah, <laughs> definitely different perspectives. Oh, sure. And, and how to associate that, how to associate that personality of God within us. Right. When there's not a human connection point to say, I'm living like this or like that. Um, I like to think of the Holy Spirit as, um, as, as a guide if that makes any sense at all, and I think that's a that's a. Thought you were getting ready to go into your your uh, Talladega Nights. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right? <laughs> no, no, we'll leave that out for today. <laughs> I like to, that. Have been awesome. <laughs> I like to. Yeah, I could run into that. No, we won't. <laughs> yeah, I like to think of the Holy Spirit as a guide. We'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah, uh, a a a voice, if that makes sense at all, or or a presence uh, in my cognitive mind to help. Uh, point me in the right direction. And sometimes that means not pointing me in a direction or saying stop or go. Um, That image of red light, green light really kind of resonated with me as I was looking over the notes for today. Mm -hmm. Um, That the Holy Spirit, I think as we make connection to, and if I'm going too far, somebody throw something at me. But, um, you know, we, we talk about Pentecost being the giving of the law and the law very much being a system of don'ts, 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 don'ts. Mm -hmm. And yet the Holy Spirit is not a system of don'ts, 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 don'ts. I see the Holy Spirit a lot of times saying, do. Hey, go do this. Hey, go talk to this person. Hey, you know, take that initiative. Don't just sit where you are, but go and do these things. In as much as he also can say, not a good idea. Stop here. Don't say that. I get hear, I hear that a lot. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm tendency to be verbal. Um, I think the Holy Spirit really is a red light, green light, if that, and that oversimplifies his role, but of moving us forward, but at the same time, keeping us from things that we shouldn't be. Um, that's kind of how I see him, and that's how I try to explain him in conversations when people ask, because that is kind of an odd question to try to address. How do you address spirit living or spirit-filled living? Right. And as you're talking, and I'm like, I'm fleshing this out. He was like the red light, green light, like red light, like basic morality. Like those, those are commands. Like those are mm-hmm. non-negotiables. The Holy Spirit is the green light though mm-hmm. of human flourishing, of growing in maturity, sure. of like bringing the, the life that we have yes. to the world around us. And, um, but how do you tell the difference between when you're being guided by the Holy Spirit and when you just really want to feel like you are? <laughs> How do you, Does that how do, make sense? How how do you, do you decipher you, emotion right, from spirit? Mm-hmm. Right. How do you like when he's telling you something or when you just think this is really what I want to hear. Mm. So I am going to attribute that to him. The, the spirit is not meant to be experienced outside of community. Not that we don't experience mm-hmm. it privately, sure. but these great moves of the spirit that you see and you see on Pentecost, it's they're gathered. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just not Peter's in the upper room. The spirit comes and he goes out and preaches. They are together and the spirit moves through them together. So community has a very important role to play um, in, in understanding and deciphering the move of the spirit because our emotions can play some, oh, sure. some funky tricks on us. And that's one thing. And I think it's also the word. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the word and community, um, all those things are so important to understand the work of the Spirit, that, that God's not moving. And, and even what we talked about at the beginning, in Pentecost, God's not moving in a different way. God is fulfilling his previous move. Mm-hmm. So God's desire at Pentecost was to have a people peculiar um, adapted to his way of living. And now God simply, instead of doing that from an outside source, the law, God is now writing that law on our, on our hearts. Mm-hmm. That's the goal is it's written on our hearts and, and we don't need the law to guide us. The law is not bad, but right. the law is not what God intended. He intended to write that law right on our hearts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So what, I mean, I think you kind of started to talk about like the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So he's a guide, he's mm-hmm. a voice, what, where, where else? Where else is he kind of active or working in our lives? Or should we be looking for him? He's an encourager. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. the, the paraclete and the phrase. And I love that, that the phrase, I, I've never seen that, that the same phrase that 
Paul uses in First Thessalonians is paraclete. It's, it's, it's a similar phrase that this ideal of being called up besides one another. And so there's this whole ideal that uh, God invites us to his redemptive mission, that God invites us to be the paraclete, mm-hmm. to, to, that the spirit working in me invites me to be uh, the spirit working in your life mm-hmm. as well. And you're the spirit working in you in my sense. life. So there's that, that, I mean, once again, back to community, community, sure. you know, community matters. Right. It matters. Um, right. We're, we're truly, you know, when we use the phrase better together, that's not just some catchphrase that I think that we've, we've hit on. I, I think that that's, that's the, the whole message of the New Testament that people are, we need each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And that like, I feel like I should recognize the Holy Spirit working in you as the Holy Spirit who's mm-hmm. working in me. Like almost like I should be able to see that yes. and the people around me who are filled with the spirit. Mm-hmm. I should recognize and see the works of him and the drawing towards unity, the, um, that common purpose. So as, as people though, do you think we more often welcome his comfort, his guidance, his direction, or do we stifle that? I think, you know, and I, you were talking about this, I, and I've never thought about this, but it may be more comfortable for me to say that I'm following Jesus because that keeps me in my humanity that mm-hmm. I'm following Jesus. And hey, if I mess up, it's just, hey, I'm still trying to follow Jesus. But when I'm saying I'm living by the spirit living within me, there is a deeper call to that. Mm-hmm. that that's 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 more extreme. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit scarier than, hey, well, I'm looking at this model of Jesus and that's the way I want to live my life. Well, the spirit living within me is that's radical right right because i can't watch how jesus interacted with his iphone but i can (laughs) very much feel the conviction of the holy spirit of how i interact with my iphone and so i think that i I agree with that there's that sense to which if i'm just following someone who lived Mm -hmm. two thousand years ago there's a little actually less responsibility i think there because we have so much of jesus's life that was not recorded slash so many things in our culture that don't exactly translate apple to apple. I, and I, I just keep seeing, because you always see the image we have it here, and I don't know if it's still Jesus. In the coffee shops. In the coffee shops. And, you know, I, that, we need an image of Jesus yep. with his iPhone. Yep. Just right. to, hey, right. what's up, dude? No, just be really cool. What was Jesus watching on Netflix? <laughs> right. <Like>, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not not Tiger King. I tell no, you that. Not at all. That was yeah. terrible. No. <laughs> it was just bad TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it, uh, something that comes to my mind too is we talk in um, recognizing the spirit. I think um, I think we almost have to take a step back and consider the fact how often do we recognize the spirit talking to us, and then, like you said, encourage or stifle. Mm-hmm. Or are there times when we are not close enough to even say, I recognize that's the spirit talking to me. Yeah. You know, it's easy to kind of put down a thought where uh, we go back to that emotion or that, you know, some sort of my, my personal moral compass, you know, it's a lot easier for me to, to say no to myself than it is to say no you know, to the Holy Spirit. But I've got to recognize that the spirit's talking to me. Mm-hmm. I've got to be in tune with him enough to be able to be receptive to what he's saying. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I think there's times when many of us, I mean, myself included, would say, I don't know that I was listening to him at that moment. You know, I was trying to do the right thing, but I certainly wasn't in the mindset of listening to him, being I, being aware of the fact that he was trying to talk to me there. And uh, those are some moments in my life that I look back and think, man, how would things have gone differently if I was receptive to what he was saying at that moment and not just trying to go it on my own. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, thanks for saying that because I was, I wish I had pulled the verse out, but there is that idea about the Holy Spirit. Even one of his jobs is to remind us of the mm-hmm. things that we already know. Right. And how often am I about to make a decision? Yep. And you have that catch of like, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I actually already know what God has to say right. about what I'm about to do. And the choice is, do I care or not? Mm-hmm. Like, it, and so it's like when I was talking with the kids, like, like that catch of like, I know. I'm supposed to show you love. Mm -hmm. That's the Holy Spirit reminding me of the things that I already know. Like he's maybe not going to even reveal more truth to me because I'm not even interested in what I, what I already know. You've talked before, like, I'm not so interested in what I don't understand, but what I do. And like when the Holy Spirit keeps reminding me of the things that I do understand, and yet I've not always, I've Mm -hmm. walked in obedience with like, yeah, there is that point where if we're not interested in what he has to say, he's probably going to seem pretty silent. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you, you've talked in your notes about the sonship ideal. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm thinking about that. For one thing, you know, that I think the, the imagery of the waiting, um, I, I don't think we wait very good. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I don't think we hear all, we don't hear as much as we should because we're too busy doing. Right. 
but but there's also this aspect of, of, of we've been invited in as to be children of God. And, and I'm thinking about my own kids. Well, you know, I, I don't get up every morning and, and give Spencer a list of all the things I expect him to do that I've already in the past. So it's like, okay, Spencer, today you need to get up, you need to shower, you need to put on deodorant, you need right. to brush your teeth, you need to comb your hair, you need to do this, you need to put on clothes, all the, mm -hmm. and, you know, and so there's an aspect of that, that, that we've been invited that there's, you know, God's raised us up to some level. Right. He shouldn't be reminding us constantly of elementary matters. Right. I mean, as believers and full of the spirit, God shouldn't have to tap us on the shoulder every time to forgive. Right. Right. That yeah. should be second should nature. Right. Yes. He shouldn't be reminding us to live, love and to give and to serve. Those things should be the default settings. Right. And, and I think so often that in my life, I get caught up on these other things mm -hmm. and it doesn't allow God to move me forward because I, he's still teaching me the elementary lessons. Right. And and um, I don't think that's his desire for us. No, no. I think it back to my kids and how they sometimes they'll look at what the other one's doing for school and Emerson's like, oh, I just wish I could be back in first grade. Like, <laughs> do we do that as Christians sometimes? Man, I just want to be that baby Christian oh, who man. just doesn't know anything because I could just... I could just bask in how much God loved me there versus like, I feel like maturity is like a bad word. Like we don't like, do we want it? Do there's, we live like we want that? There's things brought to our perspective that had never been brought before, you yeah. know, that you now have to consider how you're going to do in that, right. in that knowledge. Absolutely. Yeah. Without question. And do we own the mistakes we made in the past Right. as part of that Right. moving forward? Right. But yeah, you're right. I don't need to like tell my kids like, once things become habit, then there's space in their working memory mm -hmm. to do more. And if we always just keep some of those habits, some of those, like, if that's always taking up our working memory, mm -hmm. our, we're just constantly struggling in that, we're so quickly overloaded that we don't have space to, to learn more, to grow more, to experience more. So then I think and we miss out. We miss mm -hmm. out on, yeah. on those very things that we were waiting for. It's right. almost cyclical. You know what I mean? Right. I'm waiting for you to move, but I'm still struggling with forgiveness or my temper or my my mouth you know yeah. and i'm too busy caught up in the bog of things that shouldn't be mm -hmm. in my maturity right now as a believer yeah. and you're wanting to take me elsewhere and i'm keeping you from you know i'm keeping myself from seeing what you want me to see and go where you want me to go and it's the phrase that we've used over and over it's not what god wants from you it's what god wants for you right. so so holding on to this grudge yes is keeping you because all your energy is spent on this Thing that God wanted you to let go of right. a long time ago and just be naturally letting go of these things. You're holding on to that instead of all these things that God wants for you that that are much better than oh, yeah. than than the attitude that you're holding towards that person. Agreed. Yeah. 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 No. Uh, this month I've been really purposeful about this idea of making space for um, for our kids to kind of like as we've entered into each. Uh, week of kids church like we just kind of get quiet and like mm -hmm. we recognize like the holy spirit is with us all the time mm -hmm. like this time is set apart and um we've been making kind of that that space for them to share and i've asked them every week like how has the holy spirit helped you this week where have you seen god working in your life i've phrased it a few different ways and it has been such a wonderful time of discussion um between the kids as they are learning to and like and kids naturally they want to share oh, yeah. and so part of me is like okay if you didn't think couldn't think of anything this week like watch next week like like bring something next week um and they are just so quick to give him credit for every little thing they like, help me to forgive help me to be patient help me to wait help me to say i'm sorry like all of these things that i'm like they are giving god the glory for that they're allowing him to transform their hearts and almost every week though one of them will flip it around on me and the first week I don't know why that kind of like caught me off guard. I was like, well, wait, I asked the questions. <laughs> so when you say flip it, like they're asking you, what did he do? Yes. For you? Okay. Yeah. Right. Like I read that. Will... I thought, what did she... yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, like, so I was I'm like, got a kid up and I call on them and they're like, oh, I don't have something to share, but I want to hear what you have to share. Which I was like, fair enough. And even like a lot of my leaders have participated sure. in this. It's been so wonderful. But I like, I was like, wait. Why is that such a weird question for you to ask me how the Holy Spirit is working? Like, when's the last time somebody just asked you point blank, like, where's the Holy Spirit working at in your life? Why does that feel so formal? I don't know that it happens. I don't know we if, and I don't know if it's a fault, but I don't know that it happens enough, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, we say community and we said, and, and, and we exercise those things, but I don't know if we 
tune our vernacular to asking those types mm -hmm. of questions. Um, and to see, and then, you know, you, as, as we said earlier in the conversation, me recognizing the spirit work in your life and you recognizing the spirit work in my life, I don't know that this necessarily has to be such cloak and dagger stuff. It, it should be open conversation. Here's where he led me. Here's what he brought to my mind. Here's what he said to me. And I don't know that we shape our language to even say that at times. I think we're good to give him credit. But yeah. to say, here's where I recognize that he did this for me. I don't know if that's a part of our speech. Um, and I, it'd be great if it was. Yeah. But I just don't know if that's a part of what we do every day. We're more apt to say, I feel like I should. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. I was led. I was led. Yep. This is what seemed the right thing mm -hmm. as opposed to. And, and part of it's if you peppered all your speech with right. that. Right. With people that weren't in the church, yes. uh, that that didn't have, a, you would begin to look like a loony tin. Correct. Yeah, right. The Holy Spirit told me. The right. Spirit said. Uh, the, so so there's a natural. Mm -hmm. Hey, I don't want to. But within the body, um, maybe there should be a recognition um, within families. Mm -hmm. and, you know, why why can't family tables be like that? Why can't Sunday school classes collectives? I, I know that Holly and I have had conversations before where one of us has said to the other. Here's how I interacted with, because we're both teachers, it's easy to say a student or another teacher. And the other one has said, wow, I thought your reaction was very fitting or very good. And the response back was, well, it wasn't, it didn't come from me. It wasn't my idea. The words were put in, and she recognizes and I recognize that that's us talking about the Holy Spirit giving us things to think and give, you know, and recognizing that. And so that works for us. She and I know what that means, you know, within mm -hmm. our married lingo mm -hmm. <laughs> you know but again i don't know that that would translate to to friends or whatnot you know what i mean like you yeah. said it, it may be a little more overt but at the same time yeah you don't want to kill people with that outside of <laughs> our communities because yeah that isn't taken the way that i think we intended yeah. to a lot of times it's not that i love you it's the holy spirit's making right. you love you. correct right, right. <laughs> he yeah. told me to love you yeah i gotta forgive you it's the holy spirit i don't want to <laughs> right <laughs> but the holy spirit spirit. said yes so, okay <laughs> right whatever right <laughs> Brutal honesty, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Give him credit where it's due. But no, I think that's interesting because I do feel like that seems like in the church, like that seems like even just such a personal question where mm -hmm. I'm like, when we're talking about our family that we worship together with, like that should not feel like such a personal question because like we said before, like what I really want to know is the same Holy Spirit that's transforming my life. Like Correct. what's he up to in yours? Like yeah. how is like, cause he's pushing us the same same way. Mm -hmm. He's just going to be pushing maybe different buttons at different times. But um, yeah, I'd love to have more of that freedom to discuss that. We've even talked in our parenting collective about this idea of normalizing these conversations mm -hmm. at home with our kids. Like if our kids never hear us talking about the places we're struggling, the places we're feeling conviction, the places we need to repent, um, it will always feel very like otherworldly, mm -hmm. other, very personal, very private, very don't admit your mistakes to anybody but God. Um, and I think that there's so much benefit in our kids he hearing that as a normal mm -hmm. way of, way right. of dialogue. I agree. And feeling like, yeah, I mean, even sometimes I'm like, I, if you had asked me how I would respond to this, this is how I would have responded. But I know that God wants more for me. So I allowed him <laughs> to guide my words here. And then this is, this is the response. So in the last part of Romans 8, um, that passage you read, it talks about if we are children, then we're heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. <laughs> so great. Love that part. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we also may share in his glory. So you have this beautiful picture, this idea, who doesn't want to be a child of God? But I feel like that comes with some other territory as well. Um, I don't know. What what are your thoughts on this idea of like almost suffering that is promised to us? Well, I I, I know it. at the very least there's no way to get to the resurrection but through the cross. Yeah. Uh, Jesus couldn't get there other, otherwise, and we can't either. And so until mm -hmm. until we're willing to, I mean, that's one aspect of yeah. suffering that we we have to be willing to to pay the cost of as Bonhoeffer right the cost of discipleship. There's a cost of this, mm -hmm. and so there's a there's a suffering in that. It, it's it's harder when just generic suffering that's in the world. That that yeah. that seems a little bit more, um, uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but you know, it, it's hard for me to think, well, God God wants you to be sick mm. just so you can yeah. suffer. But I think you know, 
it, it's right, a, almost like the chaotic. The chaotic, yeah. Like God wants not, you to have chaos, yeah. just so so you have chaos. Right. And I, I don't know. I struggle with that yeah. personally. Right. Um, I mean, I think there's sacrifice that there's sacrifice to, to following Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a cost, um, and everybody right. suffers. Yeah. Well, and that's where my mind goes to. You know, um, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Mm-hmm. The world. I, I take that as you know, just because the Spirit is within us doesn't mean that we're exempt from from life right? you know mm-hmm. god's not putting the chaos on it like mm-hmm. do, but we're also not going to walk through scot free and everything's not going to be you know yeah. rainbows and unicorns <laughs> you yeah. know i mean there's going to be tough times mm-hmm. jesus went i mean that's what, just as jesus struggled right we're going to struggle too spirits with us to help us through that right yeah. yeah. but even that image of um rainfall that that's an image of blessing sure absolutely mm-hmm. not 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 you know right. we take rain as, right. as god jesus is using that as god causes it pours blessing on unjust mm-hmm. and just people. Mm-hmm. But but in the in the weird correlation of that is God allows good people and yes. bad people to suffer. Everybody yeah. suffers. Right. And and you know I that, that's a that's, I struggle with that. I, yeah. I don't know that I've ever been able to put a neat ribbon on it because I don't think that's the suffering that he's talking about. Right. Here. And sometimes I think when it talks about like his suffering and his glory, like I kind of go back very much to what what Jesus's life looked like, and that oftentimes his suffering was, was isolation, it mm-hmm. was rejection, it was mm-hmm. being misunderstood. That's good. Um, yep. Those kinds of things, and so yeah, like, I'm with you. Like I don't think that this is the verse that says, "Well, you're like the suffering." Like it's, right. but I think that there are specific things that being led by the Spirit will lead you to maybe be feeling out of place in this world. Like it almost, it, it should, right? It's, it's not like going to be a life led by the spirit. Yeah, yeah it's, is, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of just my thoughts. Like, well, it kind of almost like choosing that life though is accepting that same sometimes lonely path of walking differently. Right. Inviting yeah. the people along, wanting desperately for them to be part of this too. But at the end of the day, like knowing what your focus is and and being okay with it that's not in his sufferings that in yeah, his is significant mm-hmm. um descriptor yeah of what it means to suffer according to the, the scripture and that's significant yeah and it's it's you know we take scriptures sometimes and forget key words and mm-hmm. those are very important words because everybody suffers right right and i think even the church suffers in different ways all over the world so like sure. we can't just take our Christ, our western understanding mm-hmm. of yeah. suffering right. and like even put that across because right. there are people who are suffering severely for this decision to live a life led by the spirit Absolutely. there were more martyrs in the 20th century than any time in history now i'm not sure what the 21st century has been like but there were more people martyred for faith right. in the 20th century than any previous century Okay, so how do we how do we wrap this up? What are your final thoughts? Be filled thoughts? with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> green light, green light, green light. You got the green light. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think you. I think we understand that to be filled with the Holy Spirit to experience these blessings. There's this this recognition that we we share in the life of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I mean that there there it's not disconnected from Jesus. It's connected with the life of Jesus. That you know we, we see how he lives and and you know I always go Romans 12 1 2 is my life verse, you know. You lay your life down as living sacrifice and he'll transform, he'll renew, he'll fill you with the spirit uh, even in the ordinary aspects of life. And so you know, there, there's that connection between the way Christ lived and then there's that just the connection with community that, that, you know, we're in this together. I think those things are important to understand that this is just not me and the Holy Spirit. Right. This is me engaged right. with the life of Christ through the word of God, the revelation of God, through the people of God. It's good. Makes sense to me. It's good. Any closing thoughts, Brian? Ditto. Ditto. <laughs> I could not say it better. (laughs) Wouldn't even try. (laughs) Then let me pray for us and we'll wrap up. God, thank you so much for this time together, um, Lord, to discuss your word, Lord, your desire for each of us to um, be open and be filled with your spirit and live our lives led out of that, um, out of your spirit. Lord, I pray that you would... um, Lord, convict us in the places where we need to be convicted and and, um, of the ways that we have not partnered with you. We have not welcomed 
your spirit and your voice in our lives. Lord, I pray that you would give us the, um, the boldness, the courage to be more open in discussing and, and sharing our stories, sharing the ways that you are working in us and working through us. Lord, we love you and we want our lives to be a testament of your glory and your power here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you later. Bye.